Many thanks for joining to for the, your participation in this uh, open air uh, provide uh, community call. So uh, a meeting, a monthly meeting dedicated to all those that are contributing with uh, with content to the open air infrastructure, um, content providers, managers from repositories um, and other uh, scholar communication. Um, uh, services and systems from institutions from research communities so many thanks for joining um today uh, apart from the the, the usual um uh, updates that we 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 give about the the, the service itself we have uh, uh, a dedicated topic uh, about uh, the observatory the, the open air open science observatory it was one request from two persons in the previous community call, something that we already thought about, but we we, we have the availability of uh, our colleagues in open air to um, present and to discuss with you the, the observatory, the Open Science Observatory uh, for the meeting today. So we took that opportunity to anticipate and to have this presentation today and this discussion dedicated to the Open Science Observatory to better understand this, this service and also the, um, uh, the way that the, um, you as a content um, provider of open air infrastructure have your content available via this, um, this, serv this service. Uh, we will hear uh, from our colleague Joanna from Athena Research Center from Open Air. Uh, this um, a bit more uh, about the Open Science Observatory, more details, um, what this service want to achieve, what are the main uh, uh, issues regarding this service and the main uh, um, functionalities and content and information available via this observatory. So this will be our main topic. Uh, but uh, you can we can discuss this topic uh, later. But we you can also put your questions and um, about the, uh, the the provide dashboard and other services in open air. So if you have any issue to discuss with us, uh, feel free to to, to ask questions. Um, about uh, so recent uh, developments, novelties. Um, and uh, some of my colleagues here that are part of, of the provide management team also can add something more but uh, I, I have, we have identified uh, three three main um, three main uh, novelties or, or, or reminders on uh, recent developments in, in, the, in the provide dashboard one is something that is being developed uh, you cannot see it um, uh, in in beta or in production uh, but in fact we we are we are working um, on that and the uh, workflows and uh, and even the the main components of the user interface are already defined so uh, finally uh, we are making progress um, for the, um, the process of registration of CRI systems. As you know, we have a process for, for the validation. So in, in the validator tool, we have this available for CRI system, but we don't have yet a process using the providers more to register and to follow a workflow, a standard, uh, standard standardized workflow for the registration of CRI systems. When we have it, uh, we have prepared it. Our colleagues um, from uh, University of Bielefeld are in charge of, of this within the, the, the Open Air uh, Nexus uh, project in the, in the management of the, the provide service. Something that we are working on, what is important to say, something that we have already shared in previous calls, that the uh, DREES, the Directory of Research Information Systems, um, made available by, um, by, by Eurocris is the authoritative uh, register for CRIS systems in open air. So make sure that your CRIS system is part of this directory from Eurocris and uh, then you can uh, 
make it available via OpenAir when we have this new fun functionality available. Okay, I hope that we have um, soon information about this. We did some important progresses. Um, hope that we can have novelties about this soon. If my colleague Andreas wants to have something, feel free. If not, uh, maybe later Andreas can present, in fact. <laughs> Can present these services. Uh, this service available in beta, in a in a in a previous stage, or even in, in production when it's fully available and tested by by us. Um, and Andre, Andre, my colleague Andre already shared here the the, the address, the directory, just for you to to be aware of this, uh, that you can also check if you have any, uh, if you are aware of any system or if you have it. Make sure that it's registered here. Um, uh, something that we have presented in the last call is just a reminder: be aware that we have this multi-user access functionality working. Uh, something that was really um, a request from the community. Um, we have a dedicated uh, presentation demo about this in the in the previous in the previous call. So, but be, be aware that we have this uh, this working properly uh, in the dashboard that I am sharing now under this area of um, update. You can have access to update the admins. So there are three tabs. One is dedicated to the OAIP image interfaces and the other one is dedicated to the update of admins. So you can invite more people to 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 become uh, and to have access to the same uh, content and information that you have as an admin of the your data source in in Open Air Provide dashboard. So uh, what you need to do is to invite uh, a member only members those only members that are already that have already an account in Open Air. If they don't have account an account, please ask them to create an account and then you can have them. So you are not inviting them to create an account and to join this this service. You are inviting a already existing user, already existing account. So be be aware of this. Is the only limitation that we have. The rest is working quite well. Um, uh, one of our colleagues in the previous, uh, as a result of this, identify one or two issues with the, with the um, providers uh, with data sources that. Uh, she was responsible, so Liana, I'm not sure if Liana is here, but the, this this is related with another issue, it's not related with this uh, this issue, uh, with this new functionality. We, we didn't identify any issue with this new functionality, in fact, so it's working uh, it's working well. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's interesting and, and, and it's good to, to know that everything is working well in terms of this functionality. Just this, this is just a reminder, as I know that we have new people in every call, so maybe some of you were not in the previous call. You you are aware of this. Um, this is interesting functionality, as we have several people uh, managing the the same data source in from a big university or from a big research institution. So we may have people from different departments, faculties, etc., that may have access to this to this uh, uh, service so it's interesting to share uh, here uh, this um, um, admin rights uh, we have the issues with the registration process we still receive the registration but there are in the process of registration the user may receive some some errors something that is happening since uh, september uh, and because of we identify this error was related with another thing in provide uh, our technical team is fixing and uh, and uh, changing some um, parts of the code of the of the provide service so we are almost there uh, to put this in in production and fix it uh, so if you are interested in in in, in registering your 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 survey your data source your new content provider in open air be aware that we have an issue here with the registration uh, we still receive um, 
but uh, you don't receive the, the proper feedback of, of the validation of this registration. If you have any issue, just contact us via email or via the help desk and we will provide you an answer. But, we, but be aware that we can then proceed with the registration process, but in fact, the visible part, the feedback that we provide via the dashboard is not working properly for only that specific functionality of the registration. Hope that will this will be um, solved really really soon. Um, so we only have three three, but uh, I discussed with my colleague Andre, and we, we we said okay, be aware that apart from that that um, um, history of the aggregation of your source that you have available in the um, in in provide dashboard, so here the aggregation story tab that you have available. And where you can identify when was the last time that we aggregated content, when was the last time that the content was indexed. Be aware that there is this uh, this page visible in via the Explore. Okay, um, my colleague Andrea will share the link. Be aware that this is a, a, a page explaining all the workflow in terms of aggregation, and also uh, we have a table there. Okay, this will not be. We have a table. Uh, so we have this explanation about all the workflow and then at the end there is a table where you can see when was the um, what is the, the 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 status of the of the um, index update of of, of, of open air um, explore service so be aware and then if there is something relevant that we can identify so we we, we identify this so if you see if we found some um, delays it means that we have any particular issue sometimes in this process we identify a decrease a decrease of of output and we try to identify where is the problem and then we need to delay a bit the the the, the index etc but um, so uh, this is visible and 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 we make it transparent here in this uh, in this page where you have a go to table with the updates and you can check and then some explanation sometimes in information about uh, some specific founders etc uh, and we you can you can see that information so this is just a reminder uh, it's not something new it's just something that is already there you can identify it by this page if you want to check something it's, it's interesting for you to be aware so let's now proceed with the main topic i don't know if there is any any question if there are questions. Uh, okay, uh, Brian is also identifying things about the orchid. Um, okay, if you create a new account, you can create using also other credentials from federated um, sources, uh, but but also from orchid. I, uh, from my knowledge. No, no, I just. Pedro, Pedro, I just want to share that we tested uh, and uh, I add as an administrator just the colleague who log in with ORCID uh, credentials. Hmm? Okay, perfect. Okay, this okay. is perfect. Great. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brianna, for sharing that. Okay, things are working uh, well. And Andrea also shared all the links. So now my colleague uh, Johanna Gripari can can proceed with this presentation. So you can present yourself, Johanna. Feel free. This yes. is a, this is a community call. So this all part of Open Air. <laughs> so and, uh, feel free to start your, your presentation. Oh, hi everyone! It's so nice to join you, and uh, I can actually meet the people responsible for all the content. That is amazing. Um, so, as uh, Pedro said, I'm going to talk about the Open Air Observatory today. So, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to do a quick presentation of kind of the, um, the story behind the observatory, why we put it the way we did. And then uh, I'm going to move on to a quick demo and uh, we can have a discussion uh, later on. Uh, if that is okay. So, perfect, perfect. Let me see. All right. So, the idea behind the observatory um, it was to start uh, 
my one microphone is still on. All right. Um, so the idea was to start to, to build a platform in order to better understand the European open science landscape. Now we are already considering it, uh, extending it to the entire world. So uh, if you're not uh, from Europe, please uh, <laughs> stick around. Um, so this was just the beginning idea and we, of course we would like to expand it. Um, how do we monitor and enhance the open policy uptake? And uh, as, a, as a secondary call, how do we track research activities uh, using the content you provide? And how do we aggregate all this context to measure the impact on the society? So in terms of open science policy uptake, there are a lot of uh, mandates that are coming up and becoming more and more uh, popular, of course. So uh, we would like uh, we build a platform in order to try and track what has worked, what has not revealed hidden potential, um, areas that are lagging behind, and so on. We do want to compare uh, at different levels of interest, one of which is what we call data sources, but of course it's the content providers. And uh, I'm going to showcase later in the demo how we do this. And the idea behind this uh, indicator, basically platform, is how do we turn all the data uh, provided <laughs> into actual insights uh, to lead later on to changes in policy making and so on, uh, in order to promote good practices. So, under the auspices of uh, open science policy, we wanted to build a platform where that can be used for monitoring, policy making, uh, telling stories, and reporting on performance, and of course, uh, analysis. So. Um, as usual, <laughs> uh, we're all about openness, so it's built on the Open Ed Research Graph, and I'm going to show you later on where in the pipeline in the Open Ed workflow this is. It is based on open science uh, principles, and uh, we try to build indicators and visualizations that are uh, relevant for the community. Now, the average uh, user stakeholder for the Open Air Observatory would be a research administrator, a policymaker, and so on, but uh, there is no reason to limit to this, but that's who we had in mind. Um, so, this is the workflow or uh, the pipeline of the Open Air Research Graph. Uh, at the first step, we have uh, data sources, content provision, and at the last step, on the way to the right, we have uh, our two indicator platforms that include statistical analysis, that would be the Open Air Monitor, and the Open Science Observatory that we will discuss today. Um, as you can see, everything that is shown here is based on content provision, of course, and uh, the, the validity and uh, meaningfulness of the indicators depends on having as uh, good as possible metadata records from the original sources. Uh, okay. Uh, so what is it finally? So it's a uh, user-friendly, I think, but you will tell me also, a data and visualization platform that has uh, different exporting capabilities that I will show you so that someone can just download the statistics and do their own analysis or download images and put them in a report. Uh, with the focus being the open science uptake uh, across and uh, within uh, Europe. Uh, as I said before, since the Open Air Graph has global coverage, uh, we are considering extending it uh, to, to the entire world. It's uh, mostly focused on open science indicators, of course. But there are also indicators on uh, open access research output and how it impacts uh, science altogether, collaborations, academic impact, and so on. We have broken it down by different fields of interest. And again, the focus here is uh, at the country level. 
Now, uh, there is another attachment, the open air monitor, that focuses on funded and institutional views, uh, but that is for another call, or you can also contact me if you're interested in this as well. Okay, I'm going to move on to the demo now. Uh, can, can you see the platform that I switched from the slides? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, so, uh, after the content provision, uh, we harmonize, duplicate, interlink, and enrich everything that we have uh, that we have provided uh, with different properties and relationships in order to end up at this final product, uh, which is uh, statistics and indicators and metrics on uh, the content available in the graph. So, starting in the observatory, we have uh, the overview of Europe. And uh, there is a there is a there's a map of Europe where we have different information for each country. Uh, open access publications, publications refer to peer review publications everywhere in the observatory. We have that data sets, repositories, and journals. Again, if you are not in Europe, please try to visualize this in a global level, or pick your favorite European country. Um, so. Right off the bat, we can see some interesting things. I'm just going to give some example of the type of analysis one can do here. So we see that for the United Kingdom, 630 something thousand publications are affiliated to an organization in the country. However, only 80% or 500,000 of those are deposited in the country's institutional repositories. Uh, these numbers are actually going to be updated tonight. So, if you have any comments on the numbers, please raise them for a few hours. So, as we see, United Kingdom, 80% is deposited in the country's institutional repositories, the rest not. Uh, it says something about uh, practices and uh, perhaps infrastructure. However, when we move to Switzerland, we can see that uh, only 5% of publications affiliated the country are not deposited in a country repository. Um, now, this could also be because uh, PubMed is in uh, Switzerland as well, or not, but this is the type of thing we can see here. Now, further down, we present uh, some overall statistics for uh, the numbers that you see above. Um, one thing that may be of interest is uh, here we have the number of repositories in open door and read the data. Now, uh, you see underneath, perhaps I will make this a bit larger, um, that 31.5% are validated. What does validated mean? Uh, we go here to the methodology, which you can do for everything on the platform. Validated is under constructed attributes. And we see the definition and the construction. So a data source of research outcomes that upholds metadata standards. And then we describe here how this is done with the validator service that was previously mentioned uh, by Pedro. So this is just an example of how you can use the methodology. So we see, for example, here uh, that uh, so validated means that the, the sources have a validator score of above 50 and that just 30 percent of them are validated uh, indicating that as a community it's good for us to work on uh, metadata standards and so on now uh, further down we present a per country view on the same numbers that you had before and some additional ones so we have repositories open access journals and then open access research outcomes, the three, the four main entities that we have on the graph, applications, data set, software, and other. There are different views here, affiliated or deposited, which may be more of an interest to you, for example, uh, depending uh, on who you are representing. And you can see the numbers as actual numbers or as shares and sort by different uh, columns. Okay, so if we want to see what happens more uh, per country, 
you can click on a country here, search for a country here, or just select a country from the map and then view details. But before we go into that, let's move to uh, the, the Europe view that has a more detailed overview of what's going on in Europe as a whole. Um, so we have some average numbers here, some aggregate statistics. Okay, uh, then we move on to a set of graphs. We have separated different tabs here, overview, open science and collaborations. I split the indicators into these. There are more coming along and being populated all the time, but we started off with this. Um, so we have followed the following strategy for most of the graphs. Uh, we show the graph with uh, four different options uh, by country, by data source, for top data sources, okay, uh, by organization, and by funder. So most of the indicators, if not all, you'll be able to, uh, to see how they vary across these levels. The functionalities that I mentioned before are here. So one can download an image in their preferred format or the data behind uh, if they want to, for example, do the analysis themselves or and put the image in a report or something like this. Uh, if, as an example, let me continue with the Open Science tab. Now, here we have gold and green publications. Again, these are constructed attributes. It's not inherited metadata. So if you go to methodology, I can see the definition of gold and green open access and how we in particular constructed it using the data from the content providers. So, for example, one thing you can do here, so these are publications that are green publications are the ones that the open access publications deposited in a repository. So let's say I want to see all the green publications, so I can deselect the ones that are only gold or that are neither. And I can see the green ones and uh, which ones of these are also gold. So these are publications in fully open access uh, journals that have also been deposited in a repository. I can also do the same kind of uh, analysis um by the different dimensions like we discussed before so for example if i go to organization i can see for example that the autonoma in barcelona uh, has gold publications but we cannot find them in any repos repository uh, that doesn't mean that they're not necessarily deposited but we cannot uh, match them in the metadata records uh, or perhaps they're not we will leave the analysis to the user. Okay, so here we have provided some indicators that show metadata completeness if publication was with an abstract, if it comes uh, with a license, and what are, if it's a CC license, a PID, and so on. And uh, there's a more detailed tab where you can compare the particular indicators uh, over across countries. Again, affiliated, including non peer reviewed deposited, like in the first time. And you can also see it as shares to make the comparisons more meaningful. Further up here, we have a distinction between the, research, the type of research outcomes, the publications, data sets, software, and other. So by clicking on one of these buttons, you can see the indicators that are available for uh, for that uh, research product. So I I raised the cash before. That's why there was a small delay. And again, when you go to more details, you can see more details here. And some collaboration indicators and so on. Now let's say that I want to examine a particular country. I can activate the map here if I, if I don't want to return to the home page. And if I look at open access data sets, I see here that uh, Spain has a very high number. 
So let's say I want to understand this further, and I see that even more than that is deposited in the country's repository. So something is going on with Spain and data sets. So let's click on the view details here. Uh, I see some of uh, the average information on Spain, and then moving on to the overview, I see that uh, most of these data sets were added in 2014 and 2015, with a, a lower number later on. And perhaps someone who knows uh, can figure out what is, why this is happening, or what is missing, or, or what went well. And uh, a content provider can definitely know, <laughs> can figure this out perhaps. Uh, and then perhaps I want to know, okay, so we have all these open access data sets, but what is their metadata quality? After the enriching and everything we did in the graph and the, the duplicating, what is the, what is the best metadata as a combination that we have for the merged records? So if I go to open science here, I can see, for example, let's go to data sets. Okay, so these are all the open access data sets. Let's see in this graph. And I see that most of them do have, do come along with a license. Uh, so that is good news. And then here where I limit myself only to CC license, Creative Commons licenses, I see that the numbers are uh, quite high as well. And almost the same, if not, yeah, almost the same, the same let's say, as in the other graph, at least for 2014. Just two points difference, uh, which means that these data sets did pretty well in terms of licensing. Most of them are CC licenses, so on the permissive side. And uh, we will add some indicators now on um, uh, the type of CC license as well. Um, if we see uh, how different data sources uh, compared in terms of providing with the licenses, uh, we can see some uh, that are uh, that the the data sets that provide they all come with a license. Some that do provide way 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 more data sets. Not all of them have licenses. I'm not interpreting this in a particular way. I'm just saying what we can uh, see here. And uh, similarly, we can do this for uh, availability of uh, PIDs and go, for example, in organizations and examine uh, if organizations affiliated with uh, data sets, uh, data, yes, organizations affiliated with the data sets, if they also, if those data sets come with a PID or not. Um, overall, uh, it is very important to emphasize here that uh, this the quality of the numbers um, depends on the quality of the affiliations of the affiliation metadata uh, that we receive from uh, content providers and um, that are supplied by the researchers themselves of course um, if a country is missing from a record then it, the research product will not show up here so we may have a skewed opinion of, of what's going on now, in terms of uh, future plans of the observatory, so as I said, we want to open it up to the entire world, but the timeline for that is still uh, under consideration. And uh, we're also working on uh, integrating a fruit of science classifier in the Open Brain Research Graph, which would mean that at least for every publication, it would be possible to assign it to a specific field of science down to a couple of levels. So not just economics, but economics, microeconomics, applied microeconomics, I don't know. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what we are more actively working on right now, or it's a more short-term goal, is the continued development of indicators, which, as I said before, depends on the quality of the open research graph that we're always working on improving. <coughs> and in particular, the, the things that 
you will be seeing in the observatory in the next couple of months are more detail, details into different fair aspects, publication uh, costs, APCs, and uh, work and uh, indicators on uh, collaboration, including uh, network analysis. <coughs> if there is something that would be of particular interest to you, uh, please let us know. Okay, and that is it for me. Great, many thanks, Joanna. Um, so we have time for questions, so feel free to to make comments. Um, it's also important, as you are part of Open Air Community, also to provide feedback. So not only questions or doubts, but also or some criticism is also is also interesting uh, because we are all contributing to the same effort to build this. Um, Type of services based on open infrastructure. So feel free to 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 ask questions uh, using your microphone or to put in the chat. So Johan, I'm, I was speaking just for you to check the chat <laughs> and to reply to the to the questions that are already here um, from Norma and from Jochen. Yes, let's see. So uh, Jochen asked. Does it mean the observatory is using absolute numbers, not relative numbers, to compare? No, as you saw, so some uh, most of the indicators in this more details tab can be turned into all of the indicators into shares, um, and we are also considering now putting some, uh, including some growth rates, and also some uh, numbers that are per capita or per GDP R&D spending in order to, to make them more comparable. Depending on the indicator, there will be a different one. And then someone says, congratulations. Thank you, Norma. This is my favorite comment. <laughs> and Emilia. Okay, I put my question. There is a question in the document as well. Yes, Andre, Andre, Andre can support us on that. Usually we also have a minute document where we People can ask questions. So, Liana, please feel free. I'm sharing my screen in order to, to all see the questions here. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I noted the data from a lot of repositories. I'm not kind of. Most of them are in the open. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. What do you mean there? How do you know that they're not counted in observatory? Uh, I know because, oh. Okay, hi, Liliana speaking. I I know because <laughs> I'm checking this data on the Open Science uh, Observatory, and you have there you could uh, see the data source, and I recognize a lot of our repository, but not all of them. And I just but data source shows only the top that data sources. Yeah, it but doesn't, it doesn't show all of them. Yeah, I know, I know. But if this sign that this Nardus uh, has 11,000 and the sign that's more than 20,000, it must be on the top uh, for sure. Fit of in course. The first. Mm -hmm. So this may have to do with uh, the, the country of the affiliation. In any case, I, I will, I will not be able to answer this meaningfully on the spot. So we're going to check it out and uh, and come back to this. So thank you so much for for pinpointing. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Joanna, if I may, uh, I would like also to address this issue because uh, if if um, if th this tool aims to be a trend analysis, then it's okay otherwise uh if if we want to find reliable information then uh, we need to know what is the basis and uh, we need to have a feedback mechanism to see uh, what data uh, was used to do to produce the indicators uh, and and uh, personally i would i would also pre uh, like to use this tool as a reliable tool 
to see uh, the figures and not only the trends. Uh, and for that, I, I, I must know what is your basis for the observatory, for my country or for my institution. Not, so, yes, so eh, not all right. So let, let me answer this in two parts. First, uh, everything that is on the open air research graph is in the observatory. Nothing is excluded. So it's automatically, the indicators are automatically created from the graph. Okay, now, um, what yeah, but I, 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 so I don't want to, to to enter into a dialogue. I have the same problem then because uh, our uh, um, we have more than five hundred thousand documents in Portugal, and uh, when you are showing the map, it showed sixty-seven thousand, if I'm not mistaken. No, so, no, these numbers uh, will be uh, so they just updated explore today and. No, the observatory, I told them to hold it because I had the demo. So we expect the numbers to, to of observatory to match the ones in Explore by later today. But my question remains, if I don't have a way to see uh, how you are call, um, showing this data, then it's it's not fully reliable for me. That That's my feedback. So okay? if there we, is we a... Have to, we have to be comfortable with the data we see. We have to see that everything we have is there. And, and for that, we have somehow to have a, a, feed, a feedback mechanism or something to see what we are using to produce the data. Perfect. So a link to explore would satisfy this, right? Because they have the same numbers. So linking it to explore where you can browse all the research outcomes uh, would mm -hmm. just I want to guarantee that it, it would uh, solve this problem. Is that, is that correct? Maybe, maybe it, it, it can be something more. I think one one uh, one thing that we we did quite well in 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 the observatory is the methodology. I think the methodology mm -hmm. is already um, something that right quite important for the transparency of this kind of of tools, which is critical. And the, the, here we are talking about the transparency of the, the, the approach that we use to, to, to gather this data, uh, to expose this data. Uh, I think it will be interesting also to improve a bit uh, this part for the content and to clearly state uh, what we are using from the graph um, here in the Open Science Observatory. I think. Uh, it, it can be it can be in some cases Joanna it makes sense it can be a link for them for the for explore to make it clear that to make it um, yes to make it clear that is there is a, a link between what we have publicly available in explore and what we are consuming and exposing via observatory but in in, in for some some type of content or we may also expose a bit what what we have in the in the, in the graph more in the let's say in the in the back end to make it transparent but this is something that uh, we should discuss a bit for, uh, just, for just to give you some more feedback on whether explorer would work or not if we were to use this tool as a reliable tool we would start by, do, by doing a sample and extracting from both sides from both sides uh, the information and to compare them and to see what the differences are and once we are ensured that all the data is ma matched then we can rely on the figures so if explore can extract a sample of data from portugal somehow uh, then it would work okay <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that, that's very clear okay, okay. The and other the, um, better suggestion okay do I, can I ask another thing? I don't know if this is a monitor related. I don't know if you will have a presentation, a presentation on uh, on monitor or or you already did it. Uh, I'm part of a funder. Well. Yes, I just uh, soon we will have um, one in um, in December, a public webinar about the monitor. But you, you can ask que the question because you is aware. I can ask. I can ask questions uh, slash uh, things uh, because I I, 
we are starting to think on what we need and I just would like to give you some feedback on that. The first thing we are strongly missing uh, since we are plan as uh, funder compliant is to have a way to see for every project, for every institution, even for every searcher, uh, what is the level of compliance and to be able to drill down to each of the publications uh, related to uh, that level of analysis, okay? Uh, because we want to have a monitor and compliance tool that we can use. And for instance, if a project reports 10 outputs and only five of them comply with, with Plan S, then we want to send um, a message to the PI of that project to say, hey, you have 10 outputs, but you're not complying with uh, Plan S in five of them. Uh, these are the uh, DOIs or PIDs and please uh, uh, update uh, or upload the, the, the outputs in the repositories or whatever. So, and uh, this uh, um, level of detail is, is very important. So hopefully in December we'll see uh, uh, and monitor can comply with these requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is noted. Um, uh, we are preparing now for the institutional dashboard for the monitor. Um, uh, plan S indicators with respect to transformative agreements and so on. Uh, these are not showcased at the project level. Um, however, in combination with uh, Explore, um, where perhaps something can be done, but I keep it in mind and uh, we'll work on it and keep you posted. Okay, and uh, uh, me and my team would be glad to talk with you uh, further on these uh, requirements as well. Okay, that's very and, nice. And, uh, in, in, and even to think about uh, global services that um, Open Air could provide to funders as a whole and to check uh, compliance and stuff like that. I mean, uh, yes. Uh, at the, so the, the funder dashboard is meant to have, uh, to go in this direction. Um, however, of course, it's in a more aggregate level uh, and the requirements of each funder have to be taken into consideration. But it is definitely something we're very interested in. So let me get back to you and uh, we can talk further about this. Yeah, I'll be glad to. Thank you. Many thanks, Ron. Um, so we have already here to uh, some, some messages, congratulations, the work and also uh, specific cases from Serbia and from Portugal. <laughs> Writing some 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 issues or limitations or improvements that we should uh, work on. Uh, by the way, about the API question, we do not uh, at this point we, we don't expose the information in API. Yes, yes, we expose the information from the so uh, different kinds of information. It's publicly available via the develop dot open air dot you you can check what we have now we, we have we have there even the information about projects etc and we have a dump of all content uh, from the graph that is available via um, uh, Zenodo uh, record in Zenodo in the past we had the uh, uh, IP image interface uh, for all the content that we the publication the content that we have in our graph but we realized that it was not scalable and feasible to keep it and to maintain it. Now we generate, um, I'm not sure about the periodicity, but at least uh, three, four times per year, a dump of all our content from the graph uh, in, uh, in Zenodo. You can, you can search open air dump, open air graph dump in, in Zenodo and you will find it. We, we share uh, updates, put updates there. If one, one, I may, important, uh, remark, uh, one important remark that I think it's important to do, it's related with uh, what Joan was 
was talking also about um, affiliations, organizations. Uh, so from 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 one 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 um, one. Uh, so this important remark is to mention that this work that we are uh, uh, pushing in open air to improve the quality of the information about the organizations and the affiliations of the authors of the publications. So this is something that we 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 are we are improving in open air infrastructure so this will make our graph more powerful uh, and this is related also with the open orgs uh, open org service we can uh, we can also put a link uh, for this service is a uh, is a service where we can curate organizations and curate and organic curate organizations via this service we can improve the quality of the organizations the information about the organizations that we have in uh, in open air the next step uh, about after this open orgs is also to work with some representatives of countries if they have like is the case of portugal um to work with 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 in the entities that are responsible for curating organizations at the national level and to integrate this information in the open orgs uh, service and via that um, mean integrated uh, in, in in the open air graph so and with this we will improve for sure the quality of the information that we have in our graph and that we are exposing in explore in monitor and all the, the other services that consume the open air graph okay but this will be visible via monitor for sure this, this improvement of the quality and via the observatory also I, I was going to make I was going to make a comment this is a small thing that um, with regards to the PIDs I think you should add uh, output PIDs because when you we see the information I I I, I was uh, it was difficult for me to understand which kind of PIDs you were referring to and uh, then I understood it was related to to outputs, but you have PIDs for orgs, for authors, for other purposes, wow. and uh, it gets confused. Uh, uh, it was confused for me to understand what kind of PIDs you were talking about. Uh, absolutely, thank you. Research, research uh, results, okay, research outputs, yes. It's on, not only publications, but uh, yeah, yes. outputs, yeah, yeah. Good suggestion, Joanna. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so we are coming to, to the end, but I think this community calls have this objective is to share the progress of our developments and um, really having the, um, having the content providers, those that are part of our infrastructure, providing feedback to the development of the services. This is really what we want and to aim. So, and this is the one of the objectives of this community cause. This is why we have accepted the challenge of two of our of our previous participants. One is here, uh, Brianna, <laughs> to dedicate this call to the to this uh, new service, the Open Science Observatory. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, if you, okay, if you have more comments, questions, you can put it in the document that uh, Andre already shared it here in the chat but we can put it again and for you to comment and then um, we can follow up uh, uh, you can also add your your you, you can send us a, an email in order for us to keep in contact with you uh, so Johan already took took some uh, some notes and unfortunately we always need to do improvements no Johan services are um, it's a to finalize it is a never ending story but it, this is why we have we are here and this is why we have this community call system to, to, to improve okay many thanks for your for your comments um Joan, yes, Diana, thank you and so much, mm -hmm. comments also from emilia norma uh, jokan okay thank you thank you all PL, I don't know who is PL, but uh, uh, we, we receive all your comments and questions. Many thanks. Um, so, 
be aware that uh, uh, so we we have um, let me just finalize here my presentation as I just want to not finalize it without inviting you to the upcoming calls. Um, we have decided to uh, skip the call from December. In December, uh, it's it's uh, it's because in in fact the first two Wednesdays of uh, of December are holidays. It's it's holidays in Portugal. I know that we are doing this for all Europe. In some countries, is also um, uh, holidays in the second Wednesday of uh, of December. Uh, but as we are going to have. Um, at a tech clinic and a public webinar uh, in uh, end of November and in December for other things from from open air we have decided to skip this and start again like we did last year in in February uh, so uh, please put in your calendars uh, we we pushed and yesterday we put already the new uh, dates uh, from the upcoming calls until December uh, next year uh, put put in your agenda uh, so they are already available in in, in provide to you uh, provide community calls um put in your agenda uh, in your calendars um this is what we want to say but for january january next year we don't have the community call because we also want to have a public webinar uh, related with also the way that provide is uh, the door for EOSC, okay? Uh, so we don't want to have only a dedicated call about this subject, we want to have a public webinar, then we will invite you, but this will be in January next year, so this is why we are skipping also. And usually the first Wednesday of, of, the, of, of, of the, the year, of January next year, is also holiday holiday time for several of us and several people in several countries so this is why we are also skipping that so we don't have community call in december and january we are back in february but we are going to have a public webinar about provide in january next year and expect also to have other public webinars related with other services in december okay um uh, many thanks uh, and um, and uh, our the recordings and the presentation will be made available via the the website of this of the, the page of these community calls and do not forget to subscribe the newsletter where we in, intend to send um, new informations every time there is an important uh, article that we have highlighted in the in the newsletter that we have sent out yesterday this uh, third article that we have identified something is uh, towards an open ecosystem for scholarly metadata it's an important uh, it's an important uh, article uh, our um, technical director paulo mangue uh, is, is one of the authors i advise you to to check this article maybe andre can also put here the link just to as the last link here in the chat and uh, many thanks for your participation so it's all from from us, um, Joanna. Many thanks for your effort. Okay, for being available and open to run this presentation and open for feedback. <laughs> uh, thank you for inviting me. It would be. I'm looking forward to more discussions. Yes, many thanks, Joanna. Okay, bye bye all. Uh, let's see if um, Andre can manage to put. Oh, Andre already managed to put the link. Okay, great, Andre. Many thanks. And thank you all. See you uh, in uh, in one of the upcoming activities that we are going running, and if not before, in February in the community call. Bye bye.